Hello my crafty peeps, it's Cheyenne from PixieCrafter.com. Today we are continuing our focus on the Coffee Break Suite and the Merry Cafe stamp set from the Holiday Catalog and uh, getting our gifties ready for the holidays or even back to school. I showed you how to do a gift card holder that had kind of a coffee theme um, on my last video. So now we're going to do a K-cup holder and I have stopped drinking coffee. I get migraines and I thought, you know what, let's try to just switch to teas and stuff like that and try to eliminate coffee except for on special occasions. So I've got plenty of English breakfast black tea. Um, but the nice thing about K-Cups is they have apple cider, they have hot cocoa, lots of different options for your K-Cup for any sort of beverage taste that your a recipient will have. So let's go over what we're going to need. And I'm not making this, because I'm going with a tea theme, it's going to be more like a tea party sort of thing. So it's going to be more feminine, but you can switch this up to whatever. You're doing apple cider, well then switch to apples and you know reds and stuff like that. You want to do something more Christmas, then by all means do that. I mean just make it what you want. These are the basic supplies. So, for our ink colors, I'm going to do Calypso Coral and Smoky Slate. You're going to need a um, sheet of very vanilla, thick cardstock. Whenever you're making boxes, bags, anything like that, any sort of base, having the thick cardstock, whether it's very vanilla or Whisper White, is going to be very handy. Uh, let's see, we've got the Merry Cafe stamp set. You can get this starting September 1st. I'm using this because it does have a little bit more uh, tea stuff. So I've got part tea in a cup. Well, a little bit more, like, you know, maybe two. Um, anyway, so I'm going to be using that party in a, t in a cup uh, sentiment. And then from the Coffee Cafe stamp set, I'm going to be using the whipped topping and this little guy here. Uh, yeah, that's it for the stamp set. You can get the Coffee Cafe stamp set and the coordinating die set in a bundle and save 10%. So if you're going to get both, get them both at the same time in the bundle, save yourself some money. And for the dies, we've got the whipped topping, we've got the oval, and then the, um, the corrugated piece where it's gonna make like the ripples uh, so yeah, we've got that. You're also going to need either a one and three quarter inch die. This is from the layering circles set, or you're going to need a one and three quarter inch circle punch. Whatever you happen to have on hand. I have the layering circles on hand, so that's what I'm using. Okay, let's get organized and see what else are we going to need. All right, let's go over the rest of our papers. So I pulled out two pieces of the Petal Garden Designer Series paper. They are six by six. So I went ahead and kind of pre-cut one of these and I thought, you know what? Let's wait till I have it all together just to make sure that all my measurements are in fact correct. Because it's math and it could go incorrectly. So these are just kind of basically, all right, so we've got the big old roses. And then these are like the little butts. So I thought that they would play off each other. It still has like a similar background in the back, similar colors, so it's gonna work. And then I've got a piece of powder pink scrap and some very vanilla scrap. I pulled out my pansy punch thinking that maybe, just maybe, we're going to need to decorate this with a little flower action. Um, bone folder is going to be important and of course our stamping trimmer and whatever K-cups you happen to have on hand to gift. Alright, let's start off with our measurements. So we need to cut this down to 7 by 10. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the arm of my stamp and trimmer and cut the 11 inch side to 10 inches. There we go. Don't throw this away. This will come in handy. Save all very vanilla and uh, whisper white scraps. You will use them. Now on the 8.5 by 11 inch side, I'm going to cut that down to 7. Just like that. Now let me reference my little, little bit here. Okay, so on the seven inch side, no, on the, yeah, no, 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 let me see, let me see, got to figure it out. Okay, so on the 10 inch side, we are going to go to half an inch, so I'm using this guy over here. Now we're going to, 
we're not cutting anymore so we're just scoring so I'm going to bring this over to half an inch so you can see over here it goes all the way up to one inch I'm going to bring it over to that half inch mark and I'm going to go ahead and put in a good score there all right next we're going to flip that around and line up that score mark with two inches there we go and we're going to make a score at two inches and then we're going to bring this up this score mark and we're going to put it at two inches again and we're going to give it a score and then one more time bring that score mark up to two inches and give it a score and that should leave you with a three and a half inch section let me just make sure that that's what we got yes so this bigger section is three and a half so we've got half an inch two inches two inches two inches three and a half inches all right now on our seven inch side we are going to go in one and a half inches on each side so from one side one and a half and then flip it over and do one and a half oh, there we go so not sure how well you can see but we've got our half inch two inch two inch two inch and then one and a half from this side and one and a half from this side now it's time to do some cutting so you're going to need some scissors too as is the case most of the time when you're making boxes so i've got my scissors here and let me take a look at my reference all right so on that three and a half inch bit so we've got three and a half inches from here to here and then we've got our two inch marks so this corner here on each side is going to get cut out so let's go ahead and do that I will say make this cut here as pretty as you can because this is pretty much how it's going to stay and there we go if you wanted to use your paper trimmer for this to make sure that you're getting a nice straight line you absolutely can alrighty this is so much fun watching paper being cut with scissors all right again these are scraps keep them you will probably use them all right now over here on this half inch bit we've got these corners here we're gonna cut off those little corners as well oh, there we go goodbye little corners we don't need you now this you can keep or you can toss there are sentiments that will fit inside this all right next we are going to go ahead and cut we've got that one and a half inch score mark here and then our two two inch score marks we're just going to cut in these are going to be flaps so let's go ahead and cut those right up to that one and a half inch mark and we're going to do that on both sides. So oh, there we go. Now what I like to do with any of my flaps is to go in and kind of cut off a sliver from each edge. And this really helps everything to just kind of fit together just a lot more neatly. Um, it just, it's just overall better. And I'm not wanting to, like I want to keep all of these because I want that extra support for my box. I want this to be a sturdy box that is going to stand up all on its own without anyone's help. It's not going to tip over. So there's going to be some of that extra weight on the bottom. It won't be top heavy. Everything will be fine. Oh, there we go. I'm going to do the same thing for this little flap here. There we go. Aren't you just so pretty? All right, so there we go. Now it's little details like this that really elevate the level of your craft. It gets it more into, like it's still handmade, but it's like 
I can sell this in a gift shop homemade and doesn't everybody appreciate that? All right, now let's start doing some stamping. So let's get out our smoky slate and we are going to use both of the, the, the powder pink and the whisper white. And we are just gonna go ahead and use the smoky slate to go right over here. There we go, a nice little vanilla maybe, whipped topping. And then we're gonna stamp our little, little shape here. Just gonna pop it right on there. That's just gonna add a little bit of definition to what we are doing. Okay, now we are going to take our Calypso Coral and our party in a cup and we are going to stamp on that piece of very vanilla, no, Whisper White, um, making sure that there's enough room around it so that we can cut that oval. All right, and there we go. That is it for our ink colors. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine away because I like to put things away while I'm crafting. It just makes me feel better. Clean up as you go. All right, let's grab our big shot now and get our pieces big shotted. That is the technical term. All right, magnetic platform, and I've got my um, two cutting plates. Oh, here we go, we've got everything on there. Not everything, we still need to cut out the circles for our K-cups and our box. All right, that's there, this is gonna go right here and then we've got our oval our party Ooh, might have to move that around a little bit sometimes the magnets can be a little little fun to work with but just be patient and you can get everything lined up there we go now we'll go ahead and run this all through Nope, we still need this. I can't move that yet. Getting ahead of myself. All right, are you ready for this? All right, can you see that little embossing that it did? So cute, so cute. So look at this. This is now the bottom of our cupcake. This is our cupcake wrapper. Isn't that awesome? Yes. I'm so excited for that. It's the little things in life, little things. All right, we've got our party in a cup and our vanilla topping. We'll put all of that aside, and now let's grab our box. Oh, I've got a little piece that's hanging off. There we go. All right, so, all right, I'm going to figure out how I can do this here. So it will actually fit in. Okay. Gonna trim it down these sides. I don't need them to be that full length, so let's just go ahead and trim off half an inch, no, quarter of an inch. Now it's half an inch. Just trimming off half an inch from each of those flaps on either side. It's still gonna be fine. There's still gonna be flappages and work together. But now we will actually be able to run it through our Big Shot. If you were using a punch, you wouldn't have to worry about this step because you could still just go ahead and do it. Yep, there we go. See, now it's going to go through. So let's, we've got this flap here. So here's our little half inch piece and our first little two inch piece. This is where we are going to cut our holes for the K-cups. There we go. Here's my other cutting plate. Let's run this guy through. There we go. And then go ahead and get the other one done. There we go. <laughs> I hear this noise in the background. And it's one of my cats in, like, my old, 
<laughs> like all of my Stampin' Up! boxes that have come. So some of the packaging's in there. And he's like making noise because he's trying to sit in the box, but there's packaging in the way. It's very difficult. All right, this is the staging area, like all of my Stampin' Up! boxes before we actually toss them into the bonfire. And my kitty wanted to get into this box so badly that he had to bury himself underneath the paper. Are you happy now, Benji? Do you feel better now that you're in there? Yeah, you're ready for a nap? Okay. And while I'm showing off my kitties, here's my other kitty sitting in the sun in the window watching the guys building the Taj Mahal of woodsheds out there. Now, let us return to our regularly scheduled project. All right. Now, where were we before we were so rudely interrupted by my kitties? All right, so we've got our K-cup flaps, little holders, punched out. Now you've got two one and three quarter inch, very vanilla thick um, circles cut out. Keep those. I'm sure you can use them someday. I'm actually going to go ahead and pop them into my little bin of things that I can possibly use someday on projects. So now I'm going to go ahead and get back to, okay, yep. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and cut out our decorative paper here. So this is cut at three and seven eighths, right? That's where I cut it. Yes, three and seven eighths by one and seven, no, I want this to be three and three eighths. So here we go, three and one, two, three eighths. And that's going to give me one of the, the back panels. So we're gonna need two of these. And the other one I think I want in the big one. So here's another three and seven eighths by three and three eighths. So there we go. All right. We've got two of those. Perfect. Now we need our front bit. You know what? I think I might be able to get all of these out of one except for that extra little piece for the back. So now we need a three and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. So here we go. Let's just cut this at one and that's four, five, six, seven eighths. Now that gets trimmed down just a little bit. And then this needs to be doo -doo, three and seven eighths. So there we go. Actually, I want to cut off that side. That side looks better. All right, now if you are using a paper that has to go a specific way, it's running in a certain direction, keep that in mind when you're actually cutting these to make sure they're all going to end up going in the correct direction. All right, and now we are going to need two that are going to be one and three eighths by one and seven eighths. So here we go. We can do one and seven eighths right here. These are going to be for our two sides. And one and three eighths. One and three eighths, one and seven eighths. Okay, one and three eighths. Sometimes you got to just trust that you, you knew what you were doing when you were writing down the numbers, right? Right, all right. So here is all scrap, right? Front, back, back. Side, side. Think I'm good. We'll find out in a minute, won't we, when we start putting it all together. All right, so now let's, I forgot to go over adhesive that we're going to need. We're going to need our tear and tape. That's always good when putting together bags and boxes. We're going to need snail, and we're probably going to need a couple dimensionals. So let's start by going ahead and popping these on. Yep just like that. This is going to be fun. I think I'm going to end up, my mommy, my mommy, she is coming to visit in October. So I think I'm going to leave this in the guest room for her. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to get a corner punch. This is a corner punch that is now retired. Use whatever corner punch you happen to have if you so desire to do this. There's a lot of 
very nice decorative corner punches out there that you can do that with or you could leave it as is but I really think that adding that little rounded corner really really helps to elevate your piece so we also need to do that make sure I'm gonna be punching the right sides there it's very important there we go I can just see me doing a lot of these for the holidays and then just kind of you know keeping them on hand to maybe give out to, to some of my really loyal clients at work. All right, let's see what next. That's going to end up going up. Like, oh wait, no, this is the back. So it's all fold up. All right, so this piece right here is going to be our front bit. So we're gonna go ahead and Pop that bad boy on right there. And the sides we're going to have to wait on because we have to put the box together. All right, now that we've got most of that done, let's take our bone folder. Here it is. And we are going to start burnishing everything. There we go. All the flaps are going to go in, of course. There we go. This is going to be so adorable and so sturdy because we're making it out of that thick whisper white. So, all right, everything's in, so let us see how it's all going to go together and where I'm thinking we are going. Ah, you know what? I should not have cut those edges. You know what? We can make it work. All right, so use the... Actually, if I had just left that last one. All right. So this flap here, don't trim down. Keep it as is. It'll be fine. Though, so I've got this. I'm going to use it. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to go ahead and cut some to go over it. So, okay, don't make my mistake. I got overzealous. Keep that flap as it is. So, I'm going to need those to be... need to cut some flappy color... One and a half by two. So let's see here. All right, that's one and a half by two by two. And I'm going to pop those on. If you learn from my mistakes, you won't have to do this step. Oh, all right. So we are going to go ahead. Yeah, there we go. I want some tear and tape right over there. Do it on this flap here. Okay, so then we're just going to take off that tear and tape and we are going to bring up the back of the box. There we go. Okay, well look at that. You wouldn't need that big old piece. So yeah, you could absolutely do this with just one sheet of paper. So you only need one of the, what is it, the 3 and 3 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths and then this would be the same dimensions as the front, which is uh, three and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. So that's nice to know. You know, I do this stuff for you, you know, without practicing it first, just so that, I mean, because you're going to be in this boat too. So first impressions, learning from my mistakes, the whole process of it, you know, just to know that, you know, none of us are perfect. We're all going to have oopsie daisies. 
All right. I'm just going to put that right across there like that. There we go. Now let's get our pretty paper. Why is that so off? All right, these are not the correct size at all. Let's try this again. Let's actually take measurements. And it all started out so well. All right, these are going to be, yeah, 1 and 7 eighths. That's correct. By 1 and 7 eighths. All right, there's the problem. Let me adjust my notes so I know that for next time. 1 and 7 eighths. There we go. All right, so good thing we've got scrap paper. Here we go. 1 and 7 eighths by 1 and 7 eighths. All right, there we go. Shimmer and shiny. You know what? The holder's going to get it too. The wrapper. All right. Awesome. So, yeah, I think... Maybe we'll just have it just like that. Get some dimensionals. Oh, we're going to need that flower. Yes, I do want a flower. So let's get that powder pink. And I'm actually going to go ahead and punch two of them. Oh, look. That's on the back side of that one paper. I think I'm going to have to get that going too. Because sometimes I just don't know when to stop. Because, yeah, yes. Ha <laughs> ha. I love it when everything comes together. All right. We'll get a little mini dimensional. Put that on the back of this guy. There we go. And the colors coordinate in everything. All right, these we're going to be doing, make these guys a little bit more 3D. Uh, where is my pen that I usually like? Here we go. Love the round tip of these, so we're just going to go in and just curl up those edges. This is just kind of like breaking up the paper fibers just a little bit. There we go. Pop that over just like that. I think there might have to be some rhinestones on this as well. Because again, sometimes I just can't stop myself. There we go. More Wink of Stella. You are going to get just a dimensional. This isn't going through the mail. It's not going to worry. We don't have to worry about it getting squished or anything. Actually, we're going to put one on the back of the, the cupcake frosting, too. I don't want that to fall off. That would be tragic. All right, so there we go. All right, so let's finish putting together the rest of our card. Definitely have to put the one and three quarter inch uh, circle punch on this because I think I'm going to like that better than all of this, even though, I mean, you won't even know. You can't even tell that there was an issue. Okay, let's put our little bits and bubbles together. Get a little snail on there. Et voila. We have a cupcake. Let's get some Wink Stella on there. Because that is fantastic. that over there okay so this party in a cup we're just gonna put some snail on two of those we'll get it in there we need a dimensional over there we do need a rhinestone in the middle of that one let's take one of the big guys actually no we need something bigger glitter enamel dot it is
There we go. Actually, I don't like that there anymore. Never mind. Got too ambitious. Too ambitious. All right, but isn't that so much fun? I don't know what the cupcakes got to do with anything, but you know what? You always want a cupcake with your tea and coffee, right? No, I do. Who doesn't love a cupcake? Don't answer that. All right, so here we go, our finished project. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Learned some things. I'm glad you got to see my process. I did have an idea in my head of what this was going to be, and uh, I'm really happy with this. I like how, you know, it's it's really contained in there. Like, it's, it's good. It's not going anywhere. And... Uh, Unless you turn it upside down. Then it's going to fall out. And there's even room. I don't know if you can see. There's room in the bottom where you could put like, I don't know, a small Hershey's bar. Something like that in the bottom if you wanted to. So that's a whole lot of fun. Love this. So cute. And think of all the different options that you would have. I'm going to have to continue to make these some more. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and put some of your pattern paper around here and then punch it out that way. Oh, all right. That is it for today's tutorial. Let me bring you in a little tighter. Oh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked what too tight, too tight. If you liked what you saw, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. Clearly you enjoy my craziness. And yeah, I think I think the crazy. It's not going anywhere. It's just going to keep going and going. Um, all right. Remember, a full list of the products I used can be found in the description bar and over on my website and blog. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, go ahead and leave me a comment or contact me, message me. Uh, going over to pixiecrafter.com is also a great way to be able to contact me. It goes straight to my email, so I know that I'm getting it. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? I think that is it. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye. Want to see more? Here's some videos that might interest you. And check out my website and blog for a full list of the products I used, as well as more project ideas and inspiration. You can also shop my Stamping Up online store, my Etsy shop, or contact me about booking and planning a Disney vacation from PixieCrafter.com.